All right, so we're going to try, all right. Don't fuck it up. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, so today we're going <laughs> to... Today we're gonna to make a little fermented beverage called tapache, and it's just a fermented pineapple drink with some spices. Very nice, very refreshing. Tapache, 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 Vin. We call it tapache. Oh, what's this? Tapache. <laughs> So you want to get yourself a good jar, a jar that can close. You want something that can get a good seal on it. Uh, what I've done, I rigged it up a little bit, is where I put a little rubber band on here, and I put that over there, so it keeps it closed. Vinny, are you recording? But what the rubber band does, patent pending, is it self burps it. So if it were going to explode, it would just go back, and it would just let the pressure out. Ginger is very active when it comes to fermentation by its own. I mean, there's a thing called, I think they call it ginger bug, where it's like a, a fermented ginger product. And I washed this really well. I just nipped some of the tips off. Ah, uh, you don't need to peel it. But what I do is I will crush it, open it up, you know, get the juices going. And then we'll use these peppers. Uh, I don't go cutting them up, otherwise I'd be wearing gloves, but I just have them to open them. So I'll cut the top off. You don't need that. And I'll cut the bottom off. I don't wash it because um, it tends to wash off. The outside skin tends to have a lot of its own yeast on it. And that's, uh, that's very good for fermentation as well. And then I like to cut it into to a big quarter like that. I cut a little bit of, the, of that off of the, the inner core. I think it can make it a little bitter sometimes, the rind. Uh, it's a little woody, but if it's real ripe, it's kind of good. I don't go crazy. I just cut like a, a half inch of that little corner off, you see? All right, and then I just cut it up into pieces, all right? Nice chunks. We'll do that with all of them. Pop the old brown sugar in. I'm gonna add a little bit of water now. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of water in here. Not much, because as we put the more pineapple in, we won't know how much liquid, you know, we don't want it to be too full. And I'll just give it a little shake. I just want to dissolve the sugar. And the brown sugar, it'll sweeten it. Not that, you know, pineapple's plenty sweet, but it, it'll sweeten it and it'll give it a nice dark color. They use another ingredient in Mexico, I believe. Uh, brown sugar is an alternative. I forget what it was called, which uh, I get, well, what's it called? Have one more time for the camera, Rick. Piloncillo. Yeah. Now we got that all mixed up. We'll add some more pineapple in. Okay. Pop, pop, pop. I got this cool little tool that this company called Crowdsource sent me. It looks like a giant, oh, we'll go get it, come on. And it's for fermentation. Say you're making sauerkraut, or I want to use it, I just want to break, muddle up that pineapple a little. Pop, 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 keep things down. Yeah, that can't hurt, you know? All right, ginger. I mean, uh, uh, cinnamon right in there. We'll give it a nice little shake over the sink, Vince. And we'll muddle it back down. Crowdsource. If you were to taste that now, it'd be very, very sweet. But when it ferments, <clears throat> the bacteria and yeast um, eats a lot of the sugar. So that's it. I'm gonna add just a splash more water. There we go. Fermentation, you know, a lot of jars aren't made for fermentation. And so you kind of get what you pay for. It's worth doing a little research. Because a lot of glass bottles are just Decorative, if you ferment on those, uh, things will blow up on you. It'll get very dangerous. Yeah, Vinny, things have blown up on me, all right? I don't want to talk about it. Brad, what was it that blew up? Was it tapache or was it? Oh, no, that was the uh, basement brusco. That was a failed attempt at making a homemade hooch. If I took the bottle, I went to open it, boom, thing turned to sand. So be careful, by and that wasn't in a fermentation grade bottle. You live and you learn. All right, so we're set here. You're gonna let this sit room temp. It'll start to bubble. Uh, it should be very active come Monday. Yeah, this is the shot, Vinny. Don't screw it up. It's gonna blow up in my face. All right, not as much bubbles as I thought. Let's give it a little stir. I see all those bubbles coming up. That's all the fermentation happening. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna strain this and then you could drink it straight from there. What I like to do is I'll put it into these fermentation bottles. So I'll cap these and we'll put them back on the counter for about two, three days. And uh, that's where it'll, it'll start to carbonate. Oh yeah, it kind of smells a little bit like, a, it's a little yeasty, a little beery. Beery, I don't know if that's a word, but uh, it is today, folks. Uh, this is not a new shirt, Vinny. Thanks for asking. 
had this for a while. I picked it up at a good old second-hand store. And check out those details. Look, so it's got all these little threads on the inside looking a little like, boop, 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 you know, I don't know. And then on the outside, it just looks like, I don't know. That's cool, man. That's one of my best shirts, all right? Vinny, I wore it today for the show. <laughs> all right, back to business, Vinny. Now we're just going to pipe this stuff into the bottles. Look at that. Nice. No spills. No spills, all thrills. Uh -huh. Now, just like with the, I don't know if you've seen the kombucha video. And I really just want, oh God, oh God, oh cut, cut Vin. Whenever you're doing a fermented beverage in glass bottles, you want to leave like a solid inch of headspace on the top of the glass. What that does is give room for the, the pressure to build back up and reconstitute itself into the liquid, I believe, but it also prevents it from exploding. And then that, you just want to cap. And you want, we're going to let that hang out back in the fermentation uh, station over there for about three or four days, three days. Let's do two, let's do two and a half, three days. So, you know, I was even thinking you might be able to add water to this and, and do it again, you know? Uh, this is a test kitchen, so uh, maybe we'll do that. Oh God. <clears throat> a little spicy. <laughs> that's that, uh, the ginger and the habanero that we put in there. But that's nice, I like that. And it's got a little bit of sweetness, but not as sweet as you would think given that we put a cup of brown sugar and pineapple, which is super sweet to begin with. But there's enough sugar in there for the second fermentation to create the carbonation. It's magic, Vince. Nothing short of magic. I like to rinse them off because, you know, I don't want them to have to be sticky and stuff, you know? That's how you get ants, Vinny. Forget the numbers, but I think uh, the population of ants to humans on Earth is like 100 to 1 or something. So uh, we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll pop some bottles and we'll taste it, the, the finished product. Come back in two days. We don't need no big thrill. We mic ourselves up. Look at that mic job. Should have been a spy. Oh wait. How did I do it last time? Oh, that's it. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> so where we leave off. I added a little bit of brown sugar, like two tablespoons, just to give it a little food. It's very active, as you can see. Lots of bubbles going on in there. So I'm gonna pop the top, and it should be pretty active. Oh yeah, la booba. So it works, we got a nice little secondary. We'll bottle that up just like we did with the first. So doing two rounds, you can double your yield. Nice. I have one in the fridge, Vinny. You wanna chill it before you open it. Oh yeah, carbonation. Pineapple, ginger is very active. You only want to go, we went two days, and it seemed like it, it worked out just fine. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Well, it kind of smells like beer a little, a little, a little yeasty in a good way. Pretty nice, a little sweet, you get that chili. I, it's a, uh, a fermented drink, so it has like probiotics and it you know, promotes good gut health, which we're big on. But if you wanted to get a little wild, this would go really nice with a little rum. Maybe even a little tequila. It's afternoon, we can start drinking. Gabby! Hi! Ah, are you kidding me? <laughs> a little Pacifico. Oh. Oh. We're gonna do a little beer in there. You Not bad? The beer, you know, it's nice. It's nice? You make uh, your own michelada. It's got a nice funk slash sweet. Didn't I say that? <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's pretty good. I love it. This is really I good. I want to drink that all summer long. Woo, you heard it here first. And now a brief word from our sponsors. Oh, what's that, Vin? Oh, we don't have any sponsors. But man, we got some good beverages and uh, bon appetit. Hey, Emil. What's up, bud? Why don't you go ahead and taste that for me? It's not poisonous. You close your eyes. Where are you? On the beach? Tache? Yeah. Pache with a little bit of Pacifico in it. Oh shit. Alright, let's go try to find Rappo. No Rappo. You know where Rappo is? No, no, I'm not going in there. No way, dude. You gotta respect a man's boundaries. Well, we tried, huh? We got a couple. Look at that ship, Vinny. Right there by the Statue of Liberty. Almost looks like a science research vessel. That's where we're gonna shoot next, Vinny. A little place called Ellis Island. 